Kyle Kellogg here. It is time to talk trout fishing tactics. Um, you know, everybody talks a lot about dodgers and flashers, and I'm no exception to that rule. Those are great tools for attracting fish to your spread, and then, you know, they identify the bait or the spoon or the fly. They hit that, fish on, got a big smile on your face. Awesome. Now, there are other types of attractors that are seldom used, and I'm gonna show you a rig that I detailed in my book, Trout Tactics, a number of years ago, and I actually came up with this rig by watching black bass anglers. If you wanna tangle with fickle, hard-to-hook trout, you need to be pulling soft plastic grubs. If you wanna get into grub trolling, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and grab one of Kel Kellogg's Signature Series grub kits today and you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. I'm talking about the plug and dropper rig. And uh, before I show you the rig, let's talk a little bit about those black bass guys. I was actually talking to my buddy, Dan O'Sullivan, and this has gotta be 12 years ago. Um, avid black bass fisherman. In fact, I think he works for BASS now. But um, he was giving me some little tiny poppers. Um, I think they were river to sea poppers because I like going out and fishing, you know, ultralight bass. But what he was doing with them, he had a whole bunch of them. He was pairing those with really large poppers and walking baits and stuff like that. And he would put a short dropper behind his large plug and he would run that small plug behind it. And uh, what his theory was, what he found out on the water was that a lot of bass would come in to take a look at that larger plug, but often they wouldn't hit it. But if he ran that little popper behind the larger plug on a dropper, they would often hit that bait and you know, he could just expand the number of bites and number of fish he was catching. He would catch some larger fish on that large plug, but he would catch a lot of, you know, medium, small and some large fish on that smaller trailing plug that had just been attracted by the disturbance that the larger plug was making. Well, I decided to apply that to trout fishing, but you know, trout don't take top waters. I wasn't gonna do that with a top water plug, but what I decided to do was to team smaller offerings with larger diving plugs. And this is what I came up with. And you, you know, you can use your imagination. The large plug, it could be a large maglip. In this case, it is a Rapala Husky Jerk. It could be a Rebel. It could be a Yozuri. It could be any kind of a large plug and uh, what you want to do, you take that plug, remove the back hook, put on a swivel, put on a short section of leader, and then run a much smaller lure or bait behind that plug. In this case, I got one of my micro trigger spoons. What this rig does is this, this is going to dive down probably about 14 feet or so. Um, the large plug is going to attract trout of all sizes. Now, if I, you know, come in contact with a real bruiser, a big brown or something, he may well grab the large plug, fish on, terrific. You'll find when you run this rig, you'll catch, you know, 10 or 15% of your fish on the larger plug. And sometimes it'll make you scratch your head. Sometimes you'll catch a 10 inch trout on this, on this plug. But the majority of the strikes will come on the trailing plug, a trailing fly, grubs work great for this, a small piece of threaded worm, whatever. I found I have really good luck with the micro trigger spoons, dick knights, stuff like that. Just a small flashy spoon the rule of thumb on the dropper length is kind of the same as you'd use with a with a large dodger you know it's two to three plug lengths behind the plug that's where you want to position your lure so if you're using you know a three inch maglip maybe you want to have it back nine or ten inches something like that if you're using a six inch uh, husky jerk like this you could go 12 14 all the way out to 18 inches um, you do need to use caution when you put this in the water you got to get everything going straight if you just drop it in the water on a slack line you do risk you know hanging one of these treble hooks and then your rig's not going to work right the other downside of a rig like this is that when you hook a fish on the trailing bait, um, the, the plug is going to continue working as you fight that fish. That means there's more drag and it also means that the fish, you know, he can work against the leverage of the plug and oftentimes, you know, if, if, if the situation's right and they can, you know, develop slack between the plug and the hook in their mouth, they could throw that hook. But uh, as I've said here on the channel before, I would rather hook fish and lose fish 
than not hooked fish at all because I know I'm gonna land a certain percentage of those hooked fish. So this is a rig you can play with. Um, this is something that will help you get a small spoon down without using weight, without using lead core, without using a downrigger. If you pick a deep diving plug and uh, you know, a small offering like this, like this spoon that it's all tangled up, but that doesn't, that doesn't offer a lot of drag. You can get down, you know, 12, 14, 20 feet, depending on what plug you choose to use. So this is just an innovative rig, something you might want to have in your back pocket next time you're out at the lake fishing. It will help you catch more and bigger fish, and it's just something fun to experiment with. And it's also an opportunity to run a, a really big lure while not taking smaller pan-sized fish out of the equation. Um, some folks think that large plugs like this scare, you know, smaller fish, pan-sized fish. That's not the case. Very often they'll come in and take a look at this plug. They won't, they won't have the, the will to strike it, but the, if they spot something, you know, seductive and sexy trailing behind that plug, very often it's fish on. Anyway, I'm signing off for now. Just something to think about. Oh, and incidentally, this trailer, when I'm, you know, trailer, you know, going for average size trout, eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon line. And it is very important that you put the swivel on there because a lot of times this is gonna twist and move around. And if you get line twist back here, you're just gonna get a tangled up mess. So use a swivel, eight to 10 pound test fluorocarbon on the leader and get ready to yell fish on. Okay, I'm out of here for now. You have a great day. If you are looking for tackle, rods, reels, micro triggers, stuff like that, you know where to go fishhuntshoot.com. I'm going to jump for now. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. And if you like my content, please take a second to hit that subscribe button. I'm Kel Kellogg and I'll see you soon.